Welcome to our first session, teaching the uh, essentials that you need to know when you're going to be directing a bridge game. And we're starting off today with the introduction, where we're going to talk about what the director's role and a couple of things there, which in fact are going to guide us in making decisions uh, throughout our career as directors. And uh, underlying a lot of what we are going to be talking about in future weeks will be misinformation and unauthorised information, how that affects decisions that we're going to make. Make it a bit more interesting as we go along, we're going to apply those principles to some everyday mistakes to show that it's quite straightforward at times how you make your decisions. But we're going to put that into some context. Uh, over the decades, people have uh, written down the rules so that everybody does the same thing. And if we've got time at the end, we're going to have a look at how things called judgment rulings, which aren't quite so straightforward, how they are made. So we're starting off, as I say, with uh, asking, what is the director's job when mistakes are made? And what are they doing? Well, first of all, they're there just to keep things moving. After all, as everybody will remind you, people have come out to play bridge and that's what they want to be doing. But you want to do that in a way that's as fair as you can be to the people involved. But what we're not there to do is we're not looking for trouble. We're not going to be policemen looking for things to report. And we're certainly not going to be telling people off. Now, I say we're going to be as fair as we can. The question is, who are we going to be fair to? Is it the four people around the table? Now, we're used to talking about Kitchen Bridge, where you get four consenting adults playing the bridge together. And really, they can do what they like. But as director, you have to remember, it's not just those four people involved. It can be times a whole room full of people. And your decisions have to be fair to them and not just the four people who are around the table. It's not always easy being fair. Sometimes you'll find that the, the big clod hopping elephant who's made the mistake. Well, the poor little mouse who's had to suffer all the trouble that's been caused and the director's been called over to the table. Sometimes you have to allow the uh, mouse to uh, get the benefit of this uh, balance of fairness. But while I've got the picture of the elephant up, let's just mention the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is information. And we're going to come across this time and time again as to how do we deal with information. And that's sometimes too much information or too little information. Too little information, very often when a bid hasn't been alerted or announced, so people on the opposition are confused. Or too much information because the... Uh, pair have been quite happy to tell each other that what their bid meant and that's helped them out of a hole. So information is going to be there throughout in the background when we're talking. Uh, so let's go back then. I said here's the uh, guiding principles. The director's job is there to keep things moving and to do it fairly. So let's have a look at one or two examples. Here's the first one. Yeah, your director for the evening. You've had a very nice start to the evening and uh, round one's finished and you pick up the boards from a table and you take them over to the next table to be really helpful. But as you do so, the king of clubs lands face up on the table that you're going to and all four players see it. Well, what do you do? Well, what you'd really like to do is reach into your director's tool bag. And here it is. It's got a time machine so you can uh, wrap time backwards so that it never happened. Alternatively, you can use the uh, memory eraser so that nobody can remember seeing the King of Clubs while you slip it back into the uh, pack. But I'm afraid we will actually be using these at some point during uh, the future weeks, but this time it's not available to us. So what do you think we should do with this problem of the King of Clubs landing face up? Do you think that you can go ahead? and play the uh, board. Well, the problem is that game of clubs, isn't it? Could be quite key. And how long would it take you to work out whether the king of clubs matters? A couple of minutes, half an hour, a couple of days? But you can't keep the tournament going. You can't keep the drive going if you're spending all that time. So you need a rule of thumb to do it. And the answer really is that, well, there's a bit too much information for people to play that round. Or that board. And 
whose fault is it? What are you going to do with the score here? Perhaps one of them was going to uh, find that they could bid a slam that nobody else could bid and make it and get an absolute top on there. That's not really fair to them, is it? What's fair? Well, what we do is we have to give them an assigned score and we're going to give both sides 60%. And that's because it wasn't either of their fault. And on this occasion, we're going to both give them 60%. If their overall score for the evening was going to be more than 60%, we'll adjust it up a little bit more. But in general, you'll find that on a situation like this, giving 60% is enough. Let's have a look at another one. Here we are, it's later on in the evening, start of round six. You're called to a table because North has 12 cards and South has 14. Both of them have looked at it. So you can't uh, just quietly work out which one's missing and move it uh, from one place to another. And when you have a look at it, in any case, the card that's at fault is the Ace of Hearts. That's what we've got mixed up. What are you going to do there? Well, of course, the first thing you're going to do is remind them that they're supposed to look at their cards. Sorry, they look to count their cards before they look at them. Let's get that around the right way. They count their cards before they look at them. You're going to gently remind them of that. You're then going to think to yourself, is information here. Does the information matter? It certainly does. You can be sure that the where the Ace of Hearts batters quite often. And so they can't play the board. And what are you going to do about the scoring? Well, this time, one of the sides is quite clearly at fault. It's the side that looked at their cards before they counted them. So this time, it's going to be 60-40. And the elephant who caused the problems is going to get the 40%. And the poor mouse who just suffered the uh, inconvenience gets the 60%. Change it around slightly. What will you do if it's the two of hearts there? Does the two of hearts matter? Probably not. You can't be completely sure. Uh, people have made tricks on twos and knowing where they are can be crucial. But in general, it's probably not going to be a problem. So again, you're going to remind them that they need to count the cards before they look at them. You, this time you can put the two of hearts in the uh, correct place and they can play on. But then you use some magic words, which I like to use at the end of these sorts of situations, because you never know, the two of hearts could be crucial. And I always say, call me back at the end if you feel you are disadvantaged. And then you can change your mind a bit and alter things as to uh, how it's going to uh, be scored. One more, a bit later on again, round eight. A table discovers it's played the wrong board. North had taken the wrong one from the relay table in a howl movement. So what are you gonna do about this one? Well, the principle there is a usual one. You want to keep the play moving if you possibly can. So if neither of them have played it before, then just let them play the, let them finish off playing the board. If there's time, you might ask them to play the correct board later on, but very often you won't find there's time to do that. What about the people who couldn't play the board because they were supposed to be playing one of these two pairs and now they're not allowed to because the pair's already played it? Well, I think you've probably got the idea that they ought to get 60% because it wasn't their fault. And finally, I'll say on that one, that a lot of people think that it's North's job to make sure the correct boards are played and that North ought to have some sort of penalty if these things happen. Well, if you think about it, if that really was the rule, nobody would take the risk of sitting North. So that can't be fair, can it? And uh, you just... Uh, Shrug your shoulders, really. Everybody's got the same responsibility to make sure the correct board's played, and uh, you don't worry about it. They've played the board and it's been scored. Well, that's a few examples. As I said earlier, it's a question of not just making up uh, these decisions every time from scratch. We've had decades of playing bridge, so it's good that people have written down the decisions have been made in the past, turn them into rules, and we all apply the same rules and get the same results. And everybody, hopefully, is going to be happy on the evening. 
And where do these rules come from? Who makes them up? Well, the top level is the World Bridge Federation, which every 10 years updates a set of laws which apply to the situations we we're going to be talking about. They do allow a certain amount of variation. And this gets passed down to uh, the regulating authorities, they're technically called. The people who organize the uh, tournaments and drives. And for us, that's the club. And the club has decided that it's going to use also the regulations decided by the English Bridge Union, the EBU. And they've written them down in, at the moment, three different places. There's the Blue Book, which has been around for some years. That usually comes out every year, and we've got that in 2020. And a lot of what's in there is about what you have to do with your alerts and announcements nowadays. The Sky Blue Book came in when we started playing online, um, and uh, that's uh, been published twice this year, the most recent one in November, because they're still working out exactly how things ought to be played online. And we've got a white book, which is comes out most years, but the most recent is 2019. And that has explanations in a bit more detail as to how to apply some of the laws. And also, as I said, it's the club that decides on the regulations. So we have some extras. For example, on Wednesdays, we limit the uh, type of system that people can play when they're playing in the uh, club tournament on a Wednesday evening. And that's perfectly allowed, we can do that. And there's a few other things that we can do as well as a club that are passed down to us from the World Bridge Federation and to a certain extent by the EU. I mentioned these laws, they're all written down in books. And there's two types of decision that a director can make. And that's, they're called quite simply book decisions because they are based on the laws and regulations. And in principle, you can just read out your decision from the book itself. And people are entitled, if you're giving a book ruling, to ask you to read out from the book so that there's absolute clarity as to uh, what decision you're giving them. The other type of decisions are called judgment decisions. And uh, that's not going to be part of our course at all. And I'll explain why at the end. This is where it's not so clear cut, and I'm going to give you an example in a moment. And because it's not clear cut, players can appeal, and there's a, a whole process of, of how appeals are dealt with. And it's interesting that uh, at sort of national level, where you've got um, the best players playing, uh, some of these decisions are so complex that uh, they are overturned by appeals panels as well. But we're not going to get into those sorts of things at all. I just want you to be aware that such things exist. I'll give you an example of where it uh, can arise. Here's one. There's been a call of director, please. If you have a look at the bidding here, West, they've got a dozen points there in a balanced town, so they've opened one no trump. That's fair enough. North, mm, a lovely hand there, and they've doubled. Now, East, not very comfortable at this point. They've got a very unbalanced hand. So they decide that what they want to do is have their partner transfer into hearts so that uh, that's a safer place for them to be after the double. Unfortunately, they've forgotten that uh, they uh, don't normally, your partner certainly doesn't play a transfer after an intervening double after the no trump. And they make the situation even worse by the fact that they have not alerted their two diamonds. This is online, so they're expected to alert their own bids, and they haven't done that. They part bid their two diamonds, South Passes, West, because their system is definitely where the uh, transfers are not done after the double. Assume it's a weak takeout into diamonds and passes. North decides to pass and everybody passes, and then East is asked by North, what did your two diamonds mean? Because after all, North was expecting West to play, and East tells them that it was meant to be a transfer, at which point North calls for the director, saying that they've been disadvantaged 
they would have bid differently. Now, dealing with this sort of thing at the table just really isn't practical. So that's why I'm not covering it in the uh, talks I put together. In practice, what you would do is you take some notes of uh, what's happened, what, why North in this case feels they've been disadvantaged. You tell them to play on and that a decision will be made later. And the director then has a chat with other qualified directors to find out what they think should happen. And in a situation like this, and this is a, a real one which actually did come up, we carry out a poll of players of similar standard who understand the system being played to see what they would have done. As you can see, it's not something you can do at a table and do it fairly, which is why I'm quite happy for our directors to be trained up to understand what they can do and what they can't do. And this sort of thing is worked out much later on. So that's a quick overview of uh, the sorts of issues that can come up. Importantly, the guiding uh, thing of uh, keep it going and be fair. And next time, we're going to be, again, taking those things of keeping it moving and keeping it fair, and we'll apply those to opening leads out of turn and see how a bit of common sense will take us to the sort of decision that uh, the law book actually says you should be making.